Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a really simple tutorial on how to create a to-do list from very basic shape. In this tutorial, we're going to learn a few new things. The first one is going to be how to use the star tool. And I'll show you how to modify the star tool to make sure that it has more than four or five edges or as many edges as you want. The next thing is we're going to learn how to use the transparency option. Third one is we will use the shape properties to modify our rounded rectangle. And in the end, we will use the artboard tool to set the artboard to whatever size we want. So let's get started. Let's begin by creating a new file. Go to File, New, and let's make this 8 into 10 inches. And if you're going to print it, make sure it's CMYK and click Create. First, we'll start by choosing our colors. So I have a few colors that I've taken right here. So I'm going to bring them into my new artboard. Okay, so now I have all the three colors that I've wanted. I'm going to go ahead and right click on your rectangle tool. Click on the star tool, click, hold your option key down or alt on your Mac, drag out and now press your up or down arrow keys on your keyboard without releasing the option and your mouse button and then you can set it to as many sides as you want. I'm going to move this so that it is straight and then I'm going to release my mouse button first and then the option or the alt key. If you release your Alt key first, it's going to convert into like this. And if you don't hold your Alt key or Option key and just draw a star, it's going to be like this. So you can still draw a star and without releasing your mouse click, you can click on up and down arrow keys to increase or decrease it. But it's not going to be from the center, so sometimes it will look really weird. So make sure you follow the process which I mentioned here. I'm going to repeat this process so that you guys understand it again. Click on the star tool, click, option or alt, drag, don't let go of your alt or option button or the mouse click and reduce the number of edges. Turn it so that it's straight. Now release your mouse button and then release your option key or alt key in the end. So this one I'm going to increase the size by holding shift and click and drag so that it's big enough. Now I'll take this one, I'm going to click and try to put it in the center. You can see there's a point which says intersect that means that it's right in the center. And I'm going to place it on top and I'm going to change it to white so that you have that. And if you cannot see that intersect line go to view and click on smart guide so that it's visible. Now we have our uh, this one ready. We have to create one more in the center. So I'm going to choose this by clicking and dragging and now I'll click, click on option or alt and drag to make a copy of it. I'll hold my shift key down and then reduce the size and then go ahead and place it in the center. I see that it's not that nice so hold shift key down click and reduce it even more and now we're going to place it in the center okay so there we have our first design ready so i'll select everything and i'll hold my option key down and make a copy this one i'm going to change the color to my pink right here so select the star that you want press i on your keyboard to take the eyedropper tool or you can also go here and check that and make this color now V on your keyboard goes back to your selection tool and then select this one and now I again to go back and select the pink. Okay, so we have our two colors ready and now we don't want it very bright and shiny. I really like the transparency thing in that. So I'm going to select everything here and go to transparency and reduce this to about 60%. Okay, this is how it looks. But I want the whites to be white. So what I will do is I'll go back to my whites and set it to 100%. Okay, so I have two things ready. Now I'll make another copy of this by holding your option key down. 
and reduce the size by holding my shift. And I'll make one more, which is a little smaller than that. So I have three of these. I'll make do the same thing for this as well. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to group these things because when we're moving things around, we don't want to mess up the stars. So let's go ahead and select this, press Control G to group them, and we'll do the same for everything else. Now it's time to arrange these things. So I'm going to increase the size a little bit because, okay, and we can arrange them however we want. You can do anything, any pattern that you want, or you can just follow this pattern right here. I will uh, give you the Illustrator file for this so that if you want, you can just copy this as well. I want a few more of this. So you can arrange this in uh, any order that you want. Like if you want the pink one to go back, just click on it and press or right click transform, I'm sorry, arrange and you can say center back and it will go behind. And then you can always make this, you know, move them around. Oh, I forgot one more. Okay, so now you have this. Uh, this is a little darker than what I had over here. So if you want to make it more lighter, just click everything. Go to your transparency and you can reduce this a little bit. Maybe this should be fine. Okay, this seems to be fine, but I'll just put one more right here. So that it's not. Okay. Yes, this seems to be fine. So let's, okay. I'm sorry, I'm just, okay, let's go ahead and group this off first. Select everything and press Command G to group it. Now we're going to go ahead and replicate this to make sure we have something in the bottom, uh, like over here. So, so let's just right click, transform, rotate, and give this as 135 so that, uh, it looks something like this and then click on copy make sure you click on copy so that it creates one more copy of it okay there you go now we're gonna go ahead and pull this and keep it over here we'll use this later on uh, but right now we have to create the uh, background right here so I'm just gonna take this as well and move it aside um, just keep it out of your way kind of a thing and now let's go ahead and um, go back to our rectangle tool and let's make a rectangle I'm not covering the entire artboard on purpose because I want to show you guys something in the end, like how you can adjust the artboard to match your artwork. So let's just uh, stick to it right now and make sure we have our base ready. So next thing would be to add a text. Let's make it as to do. Uh, I'm doing this on purpose. Uh, it's not done. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and um, apply a font that I have. Uh, this is called Amano Bold and Sada, as you can see it. This is a free font and you can download it by googling this one. I'll try to find a link to this font and um, you can find the link in the description box below. Let's change the font size to maybe 72. Uh, if you feel this is too big, go ahead and uh, feel free to make it a little tinier than this, which I'm going to do probably. And okay, this seems fine now we should make sure that this is centered so first click on your align center button if you cannot see this go to window and align and it will show you these options right here once you have that now hold your shift key down and click on the box so that both of them are aligned and next click on this center button and you can see that it gets aligned everything gets aligned so now we are sure that we have it in the center let me put this a little down okay and uh, we're going to create our to-do list right here. So let's go ahead and click on the line segment tool. If you cannot see it, right click and then you can see the line segment tool. And let's start from here and go ahead and go all the way to here. If you feel like it's going up and down, the one thing that you could do is hold your shift key down when you uh, write this. Click hold shift and then draw the line and this will make sure that it is straight and nice. Okay, now that we have our line, click on the stroke. And then uh, you need to click on I so that you can select a color. Go ahead and choose the dark color over here. But this has gone to the fill. So just click on the swap fill and stroke button so that you get it to the line. Now we'll go to our stroke panel. If you cannot see this, you obviously go to window and 
got a stroke. So in this stroke, uh, you can make it thicker or thinner if you want, or we could make it two points, so that's a little thicker. Um, I really like the 1.1, so let's just leave it at that. Make it round cap and round corner. I just like the rounded one, so click on dash line and let's make this six points. So I'll just click outside and you can see how this looks like right now. So you see this tiny dot over here and if you don't like that kind of a concept, just click on it and make sure you click this. Um, when you do that, uh, it gives you a really nice edge. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so we have our first line ready. Now we're going to make a tiny box over here to match that. Right click and go to your rounded rectangle tool. Click and make a box. So as you can see, it's almost round. Uh, you can change the uh, curve of your round rectangle by going to your shape tool. Click on this and then you can see the curve right here. So make sure this link corner radius values is turned on. This is turned off so that it will increase to make it more rounder and this will decrease to make it more of a square. And let's keep it at this and click outside, cancel. Go to your selection tool and click and now we can see this but it's dotted so we're gonna go ahead and change that. Uh, make sure you uncheck this. So now you have a to do with the... I'm going to move this line a little to the left and we have our thing ready. I'm click on this and on the rounded rectangle holding my shift key down and I'm gonna and I'll click command G to group them together. Now click, hold your option or alt and shift and drag them to place it wherever you want. And I'll hold. Now you can just press command D to repeat the action. So now you have all your to-do lists ready. Now it's time to place the pattern on it. So let's go ahead, click on this and drag and place it where you think it will look nice. But since we created the pattern first, obviously it's going to go to the back. So all we have to do is bring it to the front. You can press Command, Shift and close square bracket and it will bring it to the front. Let's do the same thing here. And I want this somewhere here and Command, Shift, close bracket. I'll move these things a little bit. I'll ungroup this for now. I want this to be moved. You can make this a little bigger. Make sure you hold your shift key down and move this so that it covers a little bit of this. But you want the text and the things to be in the front. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this and send it completely to back. That's command, shift and open square bracket. And now we'll go ahead and use this one and send this rectangle to back. That is command shift and close bracket so that the design is not on top of the uh, text that you want to write. So we can do the same thing here, but we ungroup this. So this is a bit of a problem. But yeah, let's do this. Let's click on this and send this to back. And let's click on this. Make sure you uncheck this and this. Just group it together and uh, we'll say, mm, yeah, there you go. So you have uh, something ready. So um, I'm going to increase the size of this as well because I feel it will be nicer if it's a little bigger. And we could also have one of these tiny little things are floating in between somewhere. So let's just click on this, ungroup it. Let's come on shift and G and now let's click on this option and place it somewhere here. You can also place one of the red ones if you want, but uh, let's stop at this. If you feel like this is still dark, uh, you can always, I'll go back to my layer. Okay, you can always go back to your transparency layer and uh, reduce it. I'll just go ahead and uh, make this a little lighter because I'm not really happy with how they turned out. Okay, 
So you have your to-do list ready now. And uh, like I said, you can make this Docker as well. It's up to you. It's totally up to you. Okay, so now you have your to-do uh, list ready and now it's time to export it. But we notice that our rectangle is only this much, but the artboard covers a little bit. It's bigger. We also want to cut off the extra stuff which is here. So what you have to do is you could just go ahead and click on the artboard icon just here and click and resize it to fit whatever you want it to look like. Um, let me go ahead and fix this. Okay, so make sure zoom in a little and make sure there's no white space. For example, uh, I can see a little bit of white space here. So I'll just drag this. Okay, so there you go. Uh, you have it covered. I actually don't like the length of these things. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reduce it a little bit. Holding my shift key to select everything. Okay, this is much better for me. So let's go ahead and export this thing. Go to your file, export, export as. I'll save this as a to-do. I'll have to save it as a different file because I already have one. So make sure it's selected to PNG and click on use artboards and say export. You want to set it to 300 PPI, you could do that, which is like a very good resolution and click OK. You can go back and open your file and you can see this is a file that you created right now. And yes, that is how you create a simple to-do list using some basic uh, shapes that we have in Illustrator. If you like this tutorial, please make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel that will make me really happy and um, i will give the links to the um, both font which i've used right here and all the colors will be mentioned in the description box i'll also give out the illustrator file and the final product that is this one in a pdf format for you guys to download for free so make sure to go to my blog to download the file and have fun until next week bye